Hey, Roger here with Life Insurance Academy. In life insurance sales, as with any sales, what we are doing is we are in the profession of persuasion. And ultimately, what we do as persuaders and sellers is that we're serving other people. We wanna help move them to a better place. And if we think about our profession like this and our encounters with people like this as a form of service, we are always going to do better things for our clients. And we're gonna do better things for ourselves. So here are two tips. First, I want you to make it personal. Make it personal. There is a, a study done in radiology in Israel where they took a set of x-rays uh, and they provided those x-rays to a group of radiologists uh, and they were measuring engagement and performance, immediacy of engagement and also the performance of which the radiologists engaged to solve the problem. The second group of radiologists, they gave um, the actual x-rays but they provided a photo of the patient along with the x-ray. Uh, and that photo, if possible, included a picture of their family. Interestingly enough, after six months, when they went back to look at the results, the second set of radiologists that received the x-rays along with the photo of the patient and their family, if possible, had a much higher level of immediate engagement and a much higher level of service and performance. So making it personal elevated their performance. You see, we don't want things to be abstractions. The more you can put a face on your persuasive efforts, literally, the more effective that you'll be. Secondly, make it purposeful. Make it purposeful. There was a study done in a group of uh, hospitals in North Carolina on hand washing, and they wanted to increase hand washing amongst the staff to prevent disease and the spread of disease. And so they hired a marketing firm and they took three approaches to doing this and they created messaging and they put in three different bathrooms uh, facilities, some of the main ones where the staff, uh, that the staff used to try to see if they could move the needle on people washing their hands. The first, you would think that they would do it anyways, but they were trying to increase it. So the first sign, the first message said, hand hygiene prevents you from catching diseases. The second sign in another location said, Proper hand hygiene prevents patients from catching diseases. And then the third one was kind of like a control, and it simply said gel in and wash out, some kind of hip thing that they thought might work. Well, I can tell you that the sign that said gel in, wash out had the lowest level of performance on impact on hand washing because they could tell by the amount of soap that was dispensed in those places. Um, what do you think the one that got the, what do you think the one is that got the highest impact? You would think the one that said, you know, proper hand hygiene prevents you from contracting more disease or contracting a disease. However, it was the one that said proper hand hygiene prevents patients in this hospital from contracting further disease or from contracting any disease. It reminded the people who worked there why they chose their job in the first place. It was their purpose, it spoke to their purpose. Why else would you work in a hospital, right? So in life insurance sales, we need to remember to make it personal and purposeful. And we need to remind our clients um, about the benefit uh, and that this benefit that you're proposing is for a person and a purpose that they care deeply about, that they wanna protect when they're no longer able to do so or if they're gone or if they're impaired and, no, and they can't do it the way they do it now if they get in an accident or something like that. And when you do that, you're speaking to the emotional internal need of the client because it is personal and it's about them and their family and the ones they love the most. And it's purposeful because it's about the future they got envisioned for the people that they care about the most. So here's a tip. Let's never use the words, or let's try to change maybe the way we phrase some things. 200,000 is $89 a month, Michael. Maybe if we try restating it this way. Michael, for only $89 a month, you can protect your wife, Megan, and your boys by providing them with $200,000 in benefits so that they can continue to live in this home and enjoy the life that you have both planned together for them. And I know that's important to you, isn't it? Do you see that by making it both personal and purposeful, you're speaking directly to the need of the client, to Michael and Megan. And when you provide a solution, a simple solution that meets their needs, the internal need of your client, they'll move forward. So here's two questions I wanna leave you with. Ask yourself these two questions. If my prospect 
does what I ask them to do, will they be better off? Secondly, if my prospect does what I ask them to do, will the people around them or the world be better off? You see, if the answers to both of these is no, then you probably need to rethink what you're doing because it's probably about you and not about your clients. But if the answers to both of these are yes, you're probably on the right track. So let's remember to make our persuasion efforts most impactful, make it personal and purposeful. You'll write more business and you'll help more families. Hope this helps. Talk to you next time.